This is part two of the presentation on the Civil War, and this one is going to focus on the process of emancipation, of freeing the slaves. Uh, you see uh, an image here of the Emancipation Proclamation issued by Abraham Lincoln on New Year's Day, 1863. But there's a lot behind this story, and it's very interesting. Uh, let's look at some of the steps that were taken to before he issued this proclamation, this order. In uh, July 1862, about six months before he issued the proclamation, he told his cabinet that he had decided to do that. But then, the following month, he wrote a famous letter to Horace Greeley, who is the very well-known editor of the New York Tribune, a major newspaper. Uh, Greeley had criticized Lincoln for moving too slowly on uh, freeing the slaves. And Lincoln answered this uh, to Greeley. He said, my goal is to save the Union, and I will do that uh, whether it means freeing some slaves, all slaves, or no slaves. Now, you might wonder, well, why such a difference between July and August? He already knew what he was going to do, but he hadn't made it public. Uh, well, let's look into uh, the situation that he faced for an answer to that question. He had a problem. The war was going badly for the North in 1862. Uh, and a lot, there was a lot of grumbling in the North about uh, the war effort. And there was especially a lot of dissatisfaction in the border states and in the lower North. This meant, remember, that uh, Kentucky, Maryland, uh, Missouri, Delaware were slave states that were in the Union. And the southern parts of some uh, northern states were unhappy also, such as Southern Illinois and, and Indiana and Ohio. Um, Lincoln was very much afraid that in the midterm elections, the congressional elections of November 1862, uh, that the Democrats would win. And this could have been a very uh, dangerous situation for Lincoln's goals uh, He because they could have uh, pushed for a separate peace, a negotiated peace with the South. And, and then Lincoln would have failed to preserve the Union. So Lincoln, uh, on the advice of his cabinet, decided to wait for a northern victory on the battlefield before he did anything about emancipation. Now that victory came at the Battle of Antietam in Maryland in September of 1862. So he felt that he was on firmer political ground after the victory at Antietam. Now, uh, Republicans were strong supporters of the war. Uh, Democrats were divided uh, into two groups. These are Northern Democrats. Um, there were the War Democrats and the Peace Democrats. Uh, the Peace Democrats just wanted to uh, end uh, the war with the South and let them go. Uh, but the war Democrats were sometimes a little shaky on that. So if um, the Democrats won control of Congress, they might have worked out a deal with the South and ended the war. And remember, we said in the previous presentation that if there's a tie, the South wins. Because Lincoln's goal is to save the Union. And the only way that uh, they could uh, negotiate a peace with the South is to let the South go, let them continue as an independent country, and then uh, Lincoln would have lost everything. And also, the slaves would not have been freed in the South because, uh, you know, the South obviously was going to hang on to that. Uh, so he's trying to prevent that result, a confederacy uh, with slavery protected. But he's got to be careful and skillful about the way he goes about this. Uh, Lincoln was a master politician, and I think you'll see what I mean as we go through this presentation. First of all, uh, when he did present emancipation to the nation, he said, it's a military necessity. We need to do this to win the war. Uh, the slaves are being used by the South to uh, promote their war effort, and we need to take away that slaves from the South just as we would take away their weapons from them. So he issued a preliminary 
Emancipation Proclamation aimed at the South on September 23, 1862. He said, if you stop the rebellion, you can keep your slaves. But if you continue the rebellion, your slaves will be freed, freed forever on January 1st. Now, he knew very well the South was not going to accept his offer. But if he made this offer, uh, emancipation would be a lot better accepted in the North, especially in those border states. Now, this is, uh, uh, unlike that first slide that you saw, this is a, a copy of the real Emancipation Proclamation, and it's not fancy. And, you know, it's kind of interesting that Lincoln was a magnificent writer. He was perhaps the most eloquent president we've ever had. And yet, this order is just written like a plain military order. There's no great language in here. It's not like a Gettysburg Address, for example. Now, Lincoln was well aware of this, but he did it for a reason, uh, because he wanted to just present em emancipation as a military necessity. So this reads like a military order, which is what it is. And there it is, by the president, Abraham Lincoln, signed by the Secretary of State, William Seward. Now, the proclamation... Uh, was issued. The South did not respond to Lincoln's offer in his preliminary Emancipation Proclamation, so he followed through and he issued the Emancipation Proclamation on New Year's Day, 1863. Okay, so here's what the Park Proclamation said. It said that in all areas that were still controlled by the Confederacy, slaves would be freed freed forever. Uh, and this, on paper, freed over 75% of all the slaves. Uh, but the problem was, uh, by definition, only those slaves that Lincoln didn't have access to because they're controlled by the Confederacy were legally uh, freed here. So right away, it didn't free any slaves. Uh, and in areas that the Union already controlled, whether they were in the uh, border states like Kentucky or uh, in the southern Louisiana, which was under Union control now, for example, in New Orleans, those slaves were not freed by the proclamation. Uh, but this kind of setup allowed Lincoln to claim that military necessity was the reason for emancipation. So he's saying if slaves are not helping the Confederacy because they're not in the areas that they control, then they're not free. But uh, if they are in those areas, then I'm going to free them, uh, even though he didn't have access to those areas. Uh, so to some people, it seemed like not very much. Uh, but those who could really see ahead a little bit realized that this was a big deal. Um, this also was important because there were constitutional issues, not just political, but legal issues. The Dred Scott decision was still the law of the land, and the man who wrote it, Roger Taney, was still the chief justice. So um, if he tried to free all the slaves, that would have directly violated the decision in the Dred Scott case. Uh, so his approach was, you know, uh, I'm not challenging the legality of slavery. I'm just saying that if the South is using uh, certain, you know, uh, assets, certain advantages uh, to uh, continue its rebellion, uh, then I'm going to take those away. So he took slaves away in the same way that he would take weapons away. Now, you might say, well, what impact did the proclamation have? Well, first of all, African Americans had greater motivation to fight in the war, and Lincoln was now encouraging them to enlist in the Union Army. Uh, and slaves in the South had greater motivation to rebel or to escape, because if they could get to Union lines, having been in the South, they were free, and they knew that now. Uh, word spread very quickly. Um, African Americans also knew that any gains uh, the North could make 
uh, would result in more freed slaves. Any slaves living in that area would be free if the North could take more territory. So African Americans were especially motivated to join the Union Army. And uh, by the end of the war, there were 180,000 African Americans who had fought in the Union Army. Uh, and as a practical matter, they understood better than whites that uh, slavery's days were numbered, uh, that slavery was not going to survive as an institution after the end of this war, and they were right. Now this also was very important because it pretty much killed any chance of the British entering the war on the side of the South, which would have been a disaster for the North. Um, the reason was that abolitionism was very strong in Britain. Uh, they had already, you know, long before this, abolished slavery in their empire. Uh, and the, the big uh, motivation that the, the South could, you know, dangle in front of the British was cotton. Uh, but, you know, uh, now, uh, if they entered the war on the side of the South, then they were supporting slavery. Um, the Union Army was blockading shipments of cotton to Britain, and that was very unpopular there. Um, and some British said, well, we, we need this cotton. Uh, but as I said, those anti-slavery forces within Britain were very much strengthened by Lincoln's proclamation. Uh, they also, by the way, I might add, were getting more and more cotton from Egypt and India in their empire, so they weren't quite so reliant on American cotton. Now this is uh, a famous photograph of African American soldiers. Uh, they, the the uh, regiments were segregated, uh, but they were uh, hearing the Emancipation Proclamation on New Year's Day of 1863. Uh, before this, uh, a lot of African Americans, a lot of abolitionists had been very critical of Lincoln. Uh, at this point, uh, they are no longer critical of him. Uh, they will provide 10% of the troop strength of the Union Army by 1865. Now, for a long time, though, they were not given equal pay. And the uh, response of the 54th Massachusetts residence, uh, Regiment was to say, if you can't pay us the same thing uh, that white soldiers are getting, then we don't want to be paid at all. Uh, this was a very important matter of uh, principle to them, uh, but, but they were paid the same beginning in 1864. Uh, white soldiers were also very conflicted on this. Uh, some, of them, some of them said, we don't want to serve uh, with uh, black soldiers. Others said, well, this is a war that's damaging slavery, so it's only right that they serve in the Union Army. Uh, as I said, there was segregation in the Army. And segregation in the army was not ended until, believe it or not, 1948, after World War II. Uh, now, the, the proclamation had a bad effect on slavery in the South, as I said, because it motivated so many slaves uh, to seek uh, their release, uh, to try to escape. Uh, and if they escaped, they knew that freedom uh, awaited them if they could get to Union lines. Uh, and it, as I said, it really ended any British thoughts of uh, siding with the South. This is a famous recruiting poster from 1863 uh, advertising the 54th Massachusetts Regiment. That was uh, the African American Regiment uh, that was uh, depicted in the film Glory, which I would highly recommend. Uh, Frederick Douglass was one of those abolitionists who had been very critical of Lincoln, but after the proclamation, uh, he uh, enthusiastically supported the Union war effort. He sent two of his sons, uh, Lewis, uh, one of them is shown here, uh, to uh, fight in the Union army. <laughs> 